scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew 4, 12 through 23. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was the lake in the area of Zebulon and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light was dawned. From the time on from that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, and they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zeb Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing, healing every dis disease and sickness among the people. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus at the beginning of his ministry. He is starting to call his disciples. He calls Peter and Andrew to his side after seeing them performing their duties as fishermen. And he tells them, come with me and I will make you fishers of men. He goes a little further and he calls James and John to join them as well. And they leave their nets and immediately follow him. Now, have you ever stopped to wonder about how quickly these men left their lives as fishermen to follow Jesus. You see, for us to think about that, we think, well, of course they stopped what they were doing and followed Jesus. He's Jesus. But for them, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's not Jesus as we know him, right? And you see, they were given free will. It's not like Jesus hypnotized them and said, come on, follow me. Look at my watch. You know, that's not what happened. They had free will. It's something that God provides for all of us. So they must have made the decision to follow him freely. And they did so very quickly, even instantly, if we consider how the passage is written. They drop their nets and they follow Jesus. Why? Did they really hate fishing that much? You see, they would have spent their entire lives learning the trade. In those days, if your father was a fisherman, chances are so were you. And if he was a carpenter, well, guess what you were? You were a carpenter. See, these men left behind everything that they had ever known to follow Jesus. Not just their families, but also what had been their purpose in life to that point. You see, their purpose would have been to catch fish and to sell them. But Jesus promises them something so much more. Come with me and I will make you fishers of men. See, here is a purpose that they can see is so much greater than just catching fish. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a fisherman. It's an honest and actually an extremely hard way to make a living. But it does not have the same purpose behind it that being a fisher of men does. You know, when you're young, you're often asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? 
Now for me, I wanted to be a baseball player, and then a soccer player, and then a lawyer, and then a teacher. Now you probably went through similar thoughts as well. And my mother-in-law likes to say she can't wait to figure out what she's going to be when she grows up. Now most of us do end up settling on some sort of uh, career path or some sort of job. We do it because maybe we like it, or we do it simply because the job provides for ourselves and our family. And that's good enough for us. And there's nothing wrong with this. You will never hear me stand up here and say that hard work and dedication are not good things. But the truth is this. If we have been called by Jesus Christ and we have accepted him as our Savior, our purpose is now greater than any job that we can hold. Our purpose is now to be fishers of men. And now you might be thinking to yourself, well, isn't that your job, Pastor? Aren't you a professional fisher of men? Well, sure. But I don't view that as my profession. I view being a fisher of men as my purpose. It's so much more important than a job. I'm not a fisher of men because I'm a pastor. I'm a fisher of men because I'm a follower of Christ. And I'm a fisher of men because I love Jesus and I want others to know his love as well. You see, a life without purpose can be one that is very difficult. It leaves you with a constant feeling of what next? The question always echoing in your mind, why am I here? And what is the point of all of this? For so many people, when their lives lack purpose, they try to fill it with anything that they can find. They look for comfort, comfort in things like drugs and alcohol because you see that gives them purpose. It drives them. Where am I going to get the money for my next hit? Where do I need to go to score some more drugs? Which bar has the best deal today? How can I spread my money out to make sure I have enough to stay drunk long enough so that I don't have to think about my lack of purpose? You see, all these things can be a purpose for a life. I didn't say it was a good purpose for a life. And it's one that almost never leads to anything positive. But for some people, that is the purpose that they have chosen for now. But we that have accepted Christ have been gifted with a good purpose. We've been given the purpose of taking the gospel to all that we meet. And we've been given the purpose of being fishers of men. And that is not a burden, brothers and sisters. That is a gift. So then how do we do this effectively? How do we become fishers of men? Well, I know that it is no surprise to you, but I love to fish. And both for actual fish and for people to come to Christ as well. And as I thought about it this week, I kept coming back to the different ways of fishing and how it applies to bringing people to Christ. Now, every good fisherman knows that the one key, one key to catching fish is you need the right bait at the right time. Fishermen often like to use a certain bait or a certain lure that is their favorite. And see, they've caught so many fish in the past with it before, surely it's going to work now. Well, as you know, it doesn't always work. And then it becomes necessary to try something different. Fishing for people is exactly the same. We like to use our old ways of bringing people to Christ. We think all we need to do is invite them. And once they get here, they're going to be hooked. Now, while that is an important thing to do, inviting people and making them feel welcome when they come, for some people, that is not going to be enough. So we have to be willing to try different lures and different ideas and look to new ways to get people interested in Jesus. You see, just like different fish, like different bait, different people come to Christ in different ways. Another thing that fishermen will tell you is that you have to go where the fish are. You see, every good fisherman has their secret spot. They've caught fish there before, and they know they'll catch them there again. And, but unlike fishermen, who will never tell you their secret spot, unless they really, really like you, we need to work together to go to those areas where we know people need to hear about Jesus. One of the things that's always amazed me is the way that most people choose to fish 
on the opening day of trout season in Pennsylvania. You see, lots of them will stand shoulder to shoulder with one another and cast into the areas that they know the fish have been stocked. So many people in one spot vying for the same fish. Now, for me, I cannot stand to do that. I would rather be in a place that is secluded and catch one fish than stand shoulder to shoulder with people and catch my limit. But when we think about being fishers of men, we very well have to go to the places where we might stand shoulder to shoulder with others in order to be successful. See, we will indeed find ourselves competing against all the other things that people have going on in their lives. And we have to find ways to reach those people that are are compelling so that they are not distracted by all the other things coming their way. I've often heard people complaining that everyone puts God second or third or fourth in the world these days. Kind of like our uh, All God's Children moment today, right? We complain and we complain and we complain. But we need to know this. See, we we complain that people are distracted by things like sports or activities uh, to be reached by the gospel. Well, I need you to hear me, church. Those other things are not going away. There is no returning to the ways of the past when everyone was in church on Sundays and there was nothing else going on during a Sunday. So we can simply say, well, there's nothing we can do. Or we can work even harder to bring people to Christ. We can work hard to bring them to Christ in spite of all those other things that are happening. Now, another way that I thought about being a fisher of men this week has to do with a tradition that is part of where I come from in Oklahoma that is called noodling. Now, maybe you know what noodling is. Maybe you don't know what noodling is. See, noodling is when you use your hands to catch fish. And where I'm from, what it means is that you wade out into the river. Usually the rivers there are muddy, muddy red, hard to see because of the clay soil. And you feel for a hole and you stick your hand into that hole and you let a big catfish chomp down on your arm and then you pull them out of the hole. Now we can noodle for people too. Now I don't mean that we can walk up to them and cram Jesus down their throats until we can grab them out of that hole. What I mean is we have to offer our hands out to them. See, we can walk hand in hand with them through this life and we can show them the gospel of Jesus and how it can help pull them out of the holes that they're in in their life. Now this takes courage, it takes strength, and it takes patience to be a good noodler. You see, when you're doing that for fish, it is dangerous to allow a big fish to bite down on your arm. A 60-pound catfish in a river is so much stronger than you are in the water. And you're going to spend lots of time looking for the right holes that they live in. And sometimes, when you stick your hand in that hole, it's not a fish, but it's an alligator snapping turtle. And those are some of the dangers that you, you experience. But when you noodle for people, you have to allow yourself to care for that person. And you have to be willing to sacrifice your time. And often, you might end up getting hurt emotionally when your fishing fails. But it is vital that we continue to walk hand in hand with others in this world to help them find and know and grow in Jesus. Finally, this week, I thought about the way the disciples would have been fishing during their day. You see, they wouldn't have been using fishing poles. And I don't think they would have been using their hands either. But the most common way of fishing during that time period was to take a large net, cast it out into the water, let it sink down, and then pull the net back into the boat. Now often the fishermen spent most of their time repairing their nets, even more time than they did actually fishing. Because one hole that was too large would allow so many fish to escape. Well, here's the good news for us when we're fishing for people. You see, we have the best net that was ever created. And there's never any need for us to spend time fixing it because it will always be perfect. 
The net that we have to use is the love of Jesus Christ. We can walk into any place at any time, cast out that net, and we can and will bring people into contact with Jesus. But in order to do this, we have to be willing to do three things. We have to go where the people are. We have to be willing to actually cast out that net of Jesus Christ's love. And we have to be willing to do the work of hauling that net back in. You see, with the love of Christ, if we show it to others in the way that we live and in the way that we care for them, we will indeed catch many people for him. But we must not be afraid to show that love to others. We must not fear for ourselves or how people might view us. And we must be willing to share it freely with them. And if we do so, we will be successful in our purpose of being fishers of men. Lastly, I'll leave you with this thought. It's an old saying amongst fishermen. You fish the cast you make, not the one you wanted to make. See, when you're fishing, you pick your spot, you rear back, and you try to hit it with your cast. Now, sometimes you hit it. More often than not, you don't. But you still have to put in effort on that cast that you missed in your retrieval because a perfect cast, an imperfect cast, doesn't mean you will not catch fish. Fishing for men is the same way. The first, you have to fish the cast that you make. Maybe your approach to that person wasn't perfect. Maybe you didn't expect anything was going to happen. But you have to do your best for that person. Because what you will find is sometimes an even imperfect approach can yield a person for Christ. So my challenge for you this week is this. Remember your purpose in this life is to be a fisher of men. What is one way that you can do that this week? Then go out and do it. And happy fishing.